Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. All right, then. Um, another midweek episode of Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. For a while, I had been doing the show on Saturdays, but I've been a little bit bored with the news, so I thought I would do another one for you today. Today's story is Ole Orizoko Siquero Si from 2003 and 2004. Uh, the way that these videos work is to do a brief synopsis of what happens in the story and then sort of wrap up with some thoughts and things about what it all means. Is it a good story? Is it worth your time? All right, then. So Sam Walters burst into the narrator's office and immediately insists on taking him to an art exhibit because uh, the narrator is, in fact, an art dealer. Uh, the artist is a nobody named Sebastian Rodriguez, and Sam calls him the heir to famous Mexican muralist Orozoco and Siqueiros. But the art show is actually a closing of a gallery, but the gallery is actually a church, and the whole thing is actually a funeral. Uh, because, unfortunately, the uh, the artist is dead. On the drive out, they pass very quickly under a bridge. Um, the narrator sees a just a blurry glimpse of something up under the bridge, some sort of painting, but he can't make it out. Uh, when they get there, um, they find out that there's in fact no paintings at the church, at the gallery. In fact, there's nothing but a bunch of really stunning photographs. It is then that we learn that um, the artist Sebastian Rodriguez is dead. Uh, he was painting these murals, these pictures under the bridge, being held by his ankles by a friend. When the friend sneezed, he dropped them to his death. Because, as it turns out, as you know about know now, Rodriguez is a graffiti artist. So, after the, the, the wake, after the funeral, um, Sam Walters takes his friend back to the bridge. They get a wonderful glimpse of these amazing uh, murals. And then out of the trunk, he comes up with a large paintbrush and a bucket of paint. And he says that we're going to... Uh, we're going to paint over these murals before the world finds out that Rodriguez was, in fact, nothing more than a gra graffiti artist. All right, so uh, this is a fun little story. It's very fast-paced, frenetic, funny. It's heavy on dialogue, light on characters, but it's a, altogether a very enjoyable short romp. Um, tonally, I think it's, it feels very similar to some of the older works of Bradbury, going back to even to the 40s, and specifically some of his, uh, his Dublin stories, the stories that he wrote about, you know, drunk, drunk Irish people <laughs> running around uh, in, in the... Uh, uh, the Green Hills of Ireland. Um, the from, from what I could discover, um, the story was inspired by one time um, Bradbury, Bradbury was on some freeway riding. He never learned how to drive, actually. Um, but he was riding along, and he, he looked up under this this overpass, this underpass, and he saw these, uh, these amazing, you know, uh, tags, you know, by artists, and he wondered to himself, how did they get there? Um, and that was the in inspiration for writing this story. Um, but really, when it comes down to it, it's about this idea that um, uh, even to the time of the writing in 2003, 2004, um, there's this way that people look at graffiti artists as, you know, if you're an insider from the world of fine arts, you might look at graffiti as being sort of inferior. That's changed somewhat now in recent years with... Um, the massive popularity of Banksy. Um, but I think it holds true more um, beyond just the world of um, of painted art, but also arts in general. Um, it, it's very it's very applicable because there's always revolutionary, um, wonderful outsider art that is sort of um, looked down upon, be it music, film, literature, and it's dismissed. Uh, and it's dismissed and it's dismissed until the point point when it isn't, um, and then it becomes establishment. It becomes sought after. Um, collectors uh, suck it all up. Um, it becomes profitable, and it sort of loses its rebellious edge um, when it's no longer an act of defiance to the art world. Um, so I think it's a this was a very pleasing story just for that message alone, if for nothing, for if for no other reason. Because again, not a lot of character going on here. Um, very very fast paced. Not a lot of time to stop and look at the pictures themselves. Um, uh, but as a fan of uh, many art forms over the years that have been unpopular, uh, things that you know my love of makes me unpopular, particularly music, um, underground music. I, I find it very relatable, and I appreciate this story from Ray Bradbury. All right, then. Um, yeah, I'm going to recommend this one. I think that uh, it'd be worth your time to read. Take you 10 minutes, if that. Uh, but look up a, a copy of it and check it out for yourself. 
All right then, next time we'll be back with The House from 1947, right back to that classic area of Bradbury. However, like all the other stories in this, not published until many, many, many decades after, shortly before his death. Thank you, and I'll see you again soon.